If you're ready to go, Killian, we're ready to go at this end. Let's do it. Okay. I know how much you love these interviews. So let's, uh, let's... I, I, I like talking to you guys. Do you remember the last time you gave me the Spanish Inquisition? Uh, I do. I, yeah, I do <laughs> because we were trying to find out whether you were in... The next Batman. The next Batman. And you said... I can't say anything. I can't say anything. And Simon said, are you in the Batman? You said, I can't say anything. I can't say anything. And he asked you a third time and you said, look, I've signed a piece of paper. And he went, <laughs> which means you're in it. Oh, did I? <laughs> you wow, did. what a pro. It was genius, yes. <laughs> it was honestly, it was it was like Frost Nixon all over again. <laughs> so does it, um, does, it, does it feel strange to be still talking about Oppenheimer. I mean, I know we're in award season and everything, and this is the way it, it works, but is it odd to still be promoting it after this time? No, there's a lot to talk about in that movie, so um, yes. I don't don't mind that. And it's lovely that people are talking about it in such flattering terms, and it's really nice, being, because, you know, we were on strike for so long, mm -hmm. it's nice to be able to go out and talk about it freely now, particularly after it connected so in such a huge way with audiences in a far greater way than any of us had anticipated. So, no, it's, it's really nice. Of course, the strike actually began on the red carpet premiere of Oppenheimer at Leicester Square because the cast were there up until five o'clock and then the strike began and that was the beginning of it. Everybody had to leave after that. That's right, yeah, we walked off. Yeah. Okay, so we're now so okay, so now you're liberated. We can talk about it. Was there any stage in in the filming process where you get a kind of a suspicion? I mean, obviously it's a Chris Nolan film, so it's going to be great, and the cast is extraordinary, and the story is amazing. Do you get any sense of how great it's going to be at any stage? Oh gosh, n n no. I think that would be the kiss of death if you ever had <laughs> thoughts like that making a film. I know from having worked with Chris for twenty years now and been fortunate to work closely with him that he's a very very special filmmaker um but this was very unique project for him uh, and you know we knew it was a tough subject matter and it was it was an awful lot of story to wrangle into a three-hour movie and it was a huge undertaking kind of herculean really in terms of the actual production and trying to shoot it in 57 days um and the size of the cast and the sort of themes that we were uh, addressing. So I knew it was a huge, huge challenge for, 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 for all of us. But no one ever anticipated this, that, you know, that it would connect the way. I mean, on paper, you know, a three-hour R-rated movie about a physicist doesn't have <laughs> Blockbuster written all over it. Um, but somehow it, 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 it proved that formula wrong. And Although you, 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 were, you, you have said that it was one of the best screenplays you have ever read so clearly sure. when it when you when you got the pages you knew it was special at that point oh yeah i mean i i really i really really did but i i felt that way about a lot of chris's scripts you know i remember feeling that way about inception like it, that it was so so unique and unlike anything i'd read but this was sort of a next level for him i guess like i said in terms of what he was the story he was he was trying to tell but also the this how how laser like it was, you know, in 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 the way he wrote it. Also, I'd never written read a script written in the first person. That was my first experience of reading that. So it's very unique, you know. As for, so for example, let's say I walked into the room and I spot straws, you know. So I'd never experienced that. So I knew that it would be this subjective piece of storytelling, and I knew that <clears throat> that put an awful lot of responsibility on my shoulders, which was wonderfully terrifying or terrifyingly wonderful. <laughs> that sense of the weight being on your shoulders, actually, I mean, more accurately on your face, because one of the things that Nolan does is use his IMAX for facial close-ups, which is not what people traditionally think of IMAX as. I don't think I've ever seen an actor's face so explored like a landscape, yeah. as in Oppenheimer. What was it like the first time you saw that <clears throat> on the big screen? Because it's the biggest and the most intimate you will ever see an actor's face. Chris and his DP, Heute van Heuteman, who are, you know, close close collaborators as well, and they, they made a decision to use the IMAX for those intimate scenes, for those close-up scenes. Chris has always believed that you can use large format cameras like that, you know, but mm -hmm. this, they were, t again, pushing it a bit further on this picture. 
I suppose for actors, you, again, you try not to think about the format too much. I've worked with all size cameras, you know, little GoPros and huge IMAX cameras, and you begin to just adapt to it. The thing about the the IMAX is that it makes this terrific noise. It's like a, it's like an aggressive fridge, like <laughs> like like whirring and, and, and at you. So you have to kind of get over that. But I was I, I've been a bit of a veteran because he used that on several of the other movies. So I'm kind of used to that. And again, it's more about the presentation than it is in the shooting. Do you know what I mean? You don't think about it until you see it, really. I mean, in the back of your mind, you are thinking, if this is watched in an IMAX theater, it will be shown on an 80-foot screen. So I don't have to do too much. That is in the back of your head. Uh, But I always knew that this was going to be a very interior performance. We knew that from the beginning. It had to be a very quiet performance because that was the sort of world that we were in. And it, this was a deeply intellectual uh, genius of a man. So we were trying to show that those cogs turning, you know, that was really the ambition. 